In this video, I'll be showing you three underrated bicep exercises that will really help pack on some size. First being the single arm dumbbell curl. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, Alex, dumbbell curls are already unilateral, so what's the point of doing them one arm at a time? Great question. Let's clarify it. First of all, as you get stronger at curls, the size of the dumbbells increase. And what I notice in many cases are guys who use sloppy form. As in, they're doing too much of a hammer motion or they twist their body sideways while doing this weird front raise movement. Kind of like they're dancing, which is horrific. You're only training your ego while getting a false sense of progression. But assuming you did do things right, there's still some cons to using this form. Because you're alternating arms, this extends the duration of the set by quite a bit, but not in a way that's bicep focused. It's mostly your grip that's giving out because as you curl with the left arm, the right is still grabbing on. So what would normally not take a long time to just bang out 10 reps like this, now you're going back and forth. And fatigue can start to be a real problem, thus making it more difficult to progressively overload while blunting your performance, which is even worse when you're doing high rep sets. Imagine you're doing 20 reps per arm. Talk about torture while almost acting as a form of rest pause. After all, there's an the incentive to get equal reps on both sides. So I can see you taking a mini break in order to get the desired numbers. Of course, these problems can be solved by doing both arms at the same time, but now you're dealing with a completely different exercise that's much harder. Truth is, you're always gonna be stronger doing each arm independently than at the same time, even if it's with dumbbells. Also, this version will hit your core a lot more while having the tendency of leaning back. So now you end up with the similar issues of a regular barbell curl. So why not just do those instead or this to complement it, but not your regular alternate curl replacement. So that's what makes the one arm form so amazing. You can go much heavier while using stricter form. And if the dumbbell size becomes an issue, simply lean your body sideways, but now you're not loading the obliques. So you can clear it like this or do the regular way with the turning. As you can see, there's not gonna be a tendency of doing this motion right here. Finally, this technique really allows you to concentrate on that one arm. So the mind-muscle connection will be enhanced and if you have muscular imbalances, prepare to combat them. Now for the second exercise, I'm showing you a modded way of performing the cable curl, such that you only need one pulley. Though I'm not gonna tell you to curl standing up. What I want you to do is lie down on the floor. Yeah, enter the guillotine curl. This is an exercise I learned years ago from Greg Plitt. It's basically the same direction of resistance as a regular cable curl, but we're doing it in the strictest manner possible. This is very hard to cheat, except for the elbows. So make sure you keep them up as high as possible and you'll definitely feel the cramping right here. Now for the best form, I recommend having your forearms be as vertical as possible to the cable itself. This way, peak contraction is really maximized. Otherwise, you can always back up a little bit and curl at an angle, but this won't give you the same strength curve, so keep that in mind. Besides that, there's not many other physical benefits other than the fact that we can easily superset this with tricep pushdowns, especially if your gym doesn't have the low cable attachment. And this way, you're not hogging machines, having to walk back and forth, you get straight into your set. And for all my home gym guys, you're gonna love this since you don't have to invest in this big cable setup or even get an additional pulley. Now for the final exercise, I'm sharing an old school gem, the seated barbell curl. I discovered this through the one and only Leroy Colbert. What you essentially have is a strict barbell curl done in a partial manner, which allows you to overload and use really heavy weights, but it's also dead stop. In this way, it's easy on the joints and you're curling in the joint angles that are most productive for bicep growth. In fact, what I'm doing right now, isn't that what many bodybuilders incorporate for TUT? They skip that final bend of the arm. That's pretty much what you're doing over here in a way that's easier to track. So even though it's a partial lift, I've always said that when you break up the eccentric concentric chain, it's not the same. And this will absolutely cramp those biceps fast, which is why I'll also mention, it's not just bodybuilders who do this. Professional arm wrestlers, the best in the world, 
use this as an important accessory or even main lift since you can go so heavy and build that lockout strength. Heck, Denis Saplinkov swears by these. So it's not only a great mass builder, it also gets you really strong while having amazing carry over to other curls, especially that lockout portion. And might I say that it'll improve your chin up strength too when you get to the top of the bar. Anyway, for the form, you may notice I'm doing this off a plyometric box. This is to increase the range of motion a little bit more compared to off a standard bench. Though that is the traditional way, so feel free to do that. And there's two ways to curl. You can either do more of a drag curls type fashion. I'm not going too high because of mic. Or regular curl, that's it. All right, it's a simple exercise. Don't overcomplicate it. If you just curl like you normally would, but you're sitting down, it's gonna be all good. And with that said, those are the three underrated curls. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more like these, and I'll talk to you all next time.